this is a little different than normal. I'm on my back deck. <laughs> um, the sun's setting. I brought the stuff out here because I felt like being outside for a minute. Yes, it's stupendously hot right now. But also, I said it before and I'll say it again, we are part of the one hobby where 99.999% of it takes place indoors, but the colors pop outside. And of course the sun's gone down now, but when the sun was shining on the trans yellow, it's just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so, um, I once go off on a quick tangent, but not too many. I once did a layout out back out my driveway, uh, like after COVID lockdowns, uh, started and I was amazed how happy I was to see the layout and bright sunshine. Now, of course, the issue is most Lego fans will tell you, especially with the older bricks, you don't want to leave them in the sun. I guess <laughs> they'll fade, they'll turn yellowish. Uh, my Lego bricks are so old, at least those ones are, that it really didn't matter. But I wanted to do this on the backyard and my problem is I didn't get it set up in time to have the sun shining on the trans yellow, but that doesn't matter. And this is not going to be a set review of the 10497, which is, of course, there. It says L928 on the side. And this is not even going to be a set review of the alternate build, the 918 alternate, because that's, of course, the 918 there. I did those letters on my Cricut, uh, which match close enough to the same height as those. Although we only use white, I think that's more of a off-white gray, kind of a faded white. But... Um, I only have white. I don't have that color in the Cricut, but it's good enough for me, LO918. And the reason, I did buy this one for, I sorry, I, uh, I Sandy ordered me one, which came in the mail uh, just two days ago, I think, uh, Friday. But uh, we went over to Toronto for dinner after work halfway through the week. I can't remember exactly which day, uh, maybe Wednesday, Tuesday. Uh, and we went to the Lego store at Sherway Gardens and they had one. So we bought two. Well, we bought one at, and then of course the other one showed up after Sandy ordered it, uh, pre-ordered it before it came out. And I said um, to my friends and myself that I wasn't gonna build the 928 first because yes, it's a set 10497 or 928. I was gonna do this alternate build first because this is right here the very first Lego space that I ever got. I got it for Christmas 1978, maybe 79. I like to say 78. Some people say it didn't come out to 79. No, this one was out in 78, Christmas 78. And there's a whole reason why I believe this came out. I got it for that Christmas that year, but either way, uh, this is the very first Lego space that I got. I was 11 years old and it is still my favorite out of the entire series because it was my first. I'm more nostalgic than anything. And um, so I said when, the, uh, when they told us months ago about the releasing the 10497 or the re-release of 928, uh, that there's gonna be alternate builds for the 924 and the 918. I said even back then, when I get the first box, cause I ain't gonna buy more than one, <laughs> which I obviously did. But when I get the first box, it is going to be the build of the 918 cause this was the first space that I got. And so I did, and I built a 918. And then I uh, got the 928 two days later, another box. So I built the 928 and I was blown away about how utterly fantastically spectacular it is. It's such a fun, fun little set. Big set actually, it's stupid heavy. Um, and we are gonna go buy another one so I can build the 924, so I can have all three obviously. And uh, any kind of uh, bonus checks that come my way, maybe I'll buy more, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, th th those who already know me, know that I have an extensive collection of 928s, 924s, and 918s, um, almost double digits, and was double digits at one point, <laughs> especially the 928. Uh, so it's not like I need more, it really isn't, but these were such fun builds. But I wanted to talk to you today, already four minutes and 32 seconds into this, I wanted to talk to you today about this guy and what happened to my version of this guy. So I built it when I, you know, we bought it from the store, from the Lego store, sure way, brought it home and I started building that night. And it, and it is quite the build, even the 918 was quite the build. Not as extensive as the 928, but basically it's a scaled down version of the 928 with the building techniques, with the side edges and all that stuff. 
and I can talk a little bit more about uh, something that I noticed about that later. But the 918 is the one set that didn't come with retractable landing gear. The 924 and the 928 come with retractable landing gear, and you can see a landing gear there, and you can see a landing gear there, and it folds up inside the ship. And I thought the 918 was basically laying right on the ground. The bottom of the wing plates are right on the ground. I said, that's not right. So originally all I did is that there was a couple two by two round bricks and a couple four by four round bricks with whatever. And I used those, I tried to make them look as close as possible to the landing struts like that, right? So I, and I put three of them on, on this guy and that was good enough for a minute. But I said, I want the landing gear to retract. So I had to very carefully take this thing apart so I could see uh, where the wing plates were and uh, how to, uh, the, the, the attachments for these edges, because that's kind of complicated, and uh, build a whole brand new infrastructure inside internally in this, this uh, middle part, the three plate or one brick high middle part between the sandwich between the two wing plates. Uh, so it could not only hold the top again, but also have retractable landing gear. So this is my attempt. Now I had a few iterations of this, my first iteration, the front landing gear folded right up inside, and, but I could not, could not, could not maintain structural integrity, get the back ones to fold up inside. And my friend Mark actually posted uh, on my little Facebook uh, page saying that he wanted, he was thinking about trying to get the retractable landing gear on the back to go sideways, so it'd come out this way and this way. And I said, that, I, I thought about that and I just didn't see, how to get that to work with all the the complexity in here that keeps these edge plates on. And I couldn't do it myself. I hope he, he, he actually does it because that I think that'd be fantastic. The other thing is that I could have moved these landing plates out, landing pads out by one stud each way. So it'd be like a two, two stud space in between them. Um, but that was gonna take a lot more complicated effort and get rid of that little Z brick or whatever it is, the, this little um, plate brick plate piece here that comes up a brick. Uh, and I wanted to keep the top as much intact as possible of the original build. So I couldn't do that. Um, maybe I'll revisit that later, but right now with what I did is basically I reworked the entire interior of the ship here, uh, just between the two sets of wing plates uh, top and bottom, uh, basically down to the complete center with Technic beams and the, the four by six Technic square uh, or rectangle here. And the rest is Technic beams back here that flow all the way back and basically follow on the outside the same pattern as the Technic beams in the instructions. Like the black beam that goes all the way through on the outside is exactly the same spot as it is here as it shows on the instructions. But inside I have like a, a row of Technic beams here uh, that come to, come about to here, uh, and so and then sandwiched in it, uh, and so there's lots of rigidity. There's lots of rigidity here, and that's what I wanted. I wanted this thing to be as, as stable as possible, uh, and so it, it it is. And um, but the 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 takeaway is that these landing gear pieces do not retract fully inside the ship. They are exposed like that, which I'm okay with. I'm satisfied with my build here for now. I might revisit it later, but after two or three iterations to get to this point, I'm not really that interested in uh, revisiting it because it does work. Ta-da! Now the only, the only deficiency that I have on that specific build for my, for my landing struts is that when they are folded up, like that, see, uh, the back is so heavy that the back sits down, right? Like the like it's it's rocking on the back because all this weight in the back is pulling it down. It's, it's back heavy, as they say. When it's landing like that, it's perfect. It's, it's not back heavy at all because, of course, when you go, the landing struts are farther back than they are when they're up here. So the center of gravity is about there. Uh, so it absolutely works fine uh, when it's landing like that. And that is going to bring me to the next topic. And it's something that I've been trying to articulate for the last, I don't know, decade of Lego builds, maybe more, is the, and I get it, I really do, but the over 
building the over piece, the over parts that they use in order to build this. Now, again, this is gorgeous. Oh, this, sorry, I forgot a few other points. I basically redid the entire interior of the thing. So this is standard. This piece, these two pieces here and that to keep this piece on. This is new because it had the one by six tile going all the way back. Uh, this is standard as the way it was before. These pieces are standard, but this, I wanted, the one thing I wanted to do, the fix even from the beginning after I built the first one is that, that they have the steering wheel kind of on a hinge coming down to the guy and the guy's basically laying down so he can fit in here. I never liked sets where they did that and they started doing that. And I don't know if it was Mars missions or mission to Mars where they had those white orange. I can't remember which one I always get them mixed up, but the guy is in a flyer. There's not even a control panel in it, but basically he's lying straight on his back and there's no control with him, but he's laying, he's laying down. You can't see straight ahead if you're laying down. And so what I wanted is you can see the guy in here, right? There's a guy in here. He's sitting straight up, straight up and down, right? This is what I wanted. So one of the things I made sure of when I rebuilt the entire interior here is that the, there would be enough of a cubby hole, a depression in the middle where the guy can sit properly. <laughs> and it turns out that, um, so this closes and you can see the guy's head. He's not laying down, he's sitting down and the steering wheel's right there. It's not laying on top of him. The steering wheel's right there and he's a little control panel right there. Uh, so I did all that. Uh, and so basically his bum, his, his, uh, where he's sitting is on top of this two, uh, four by eight and this one by six right there. Cause if you knew about this set, the guy sitting in there right there is sitting on top of this four by eight, like he's attached to this four by eight. So <laughs> it's not exactly the same. He's on the bottom piece of his ship. He's sitting on the bottom piece of his ship. But So that's also another 918 giveaway is that he's sitting basically in exactly the same spot uh as the original as he is here so that's what i wanted and you can see i i like that a lot better it's a one-man patrol craft it's exactly what it is it's a one-man patrol craft which is exactly what the original one is called in 1979 1978 um i also did that i also changed the entire way that the steering wheel was connected because as i said it was kind of hinged down uh, so he could it would be laying on top of him so he can control it laying down. I thought that was stupid. But because those two um, pieces, or these pieces right here, were the, were the parts that actually made that thing hinge down. And I said, I need those parts for the landing struts. And I said, I don't want to go down. I wanted to do this entire rebuild using the pieces that came in the set. But because two of these pieces, these one by two uh, with a uh, Technic beam hole in it, were used for the steering wheel so it could bend as uh, the like, um, leverage down. Uh, for crying out loud, go down. Uh, I can't even, my mind's going, I'm already tired. Uh, so it could uh, basically hinge down on top of the, the uh, this pilot. They're already in here and I couldn't reuse them for here. And I said, well, I gotta get these pieces back here. So that's also a help because now the steering wheel is rigid, it's built, built right into this thing. The control panel is right there. It's not the same control panel as the original 918, but it's good enough. Uh, it's like it came in Mtron or Space Police 2. I can't remember which, where those came from. Maybe it's uh, Mtron 2. I mean, um, Blacktron 2. I think that's where those pieces originally showed up, one by two with that panel on it. But anyway, so he's sitting. There's no hinge. The, the steering wheel is exactly where it's supposed to be. It's rigid in there. The guy's sitting straight up and down. So that got me those two pieces back for the landing struts. The, the, the last thing was is that you got these Technic um, number ones, I think they are, uh, that hold uh, he, like these guys here, that guy right there. One of them was used to hold the antenna on the top. And I said, well, I gotta get that out of there so I could use it for the landing struts because each landing strut requires uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And they only had 11 down here. <laughs> I said, uh, and I don't want to go back into my collection. I, said, I, I got a billion of them in my collection, but I wanted to do this entire build, this entire build with the pieces that came in 10497. So I had to rebuild this guy, the antenna thing. And I think I did a pretty good job because basically this antenna was in that uh, Technic piece that was on a one by two red Technic brick with a friction peg, uh, friction pin in it, and it was pointed straight up and it would actually wobble. Now this one, this is just a little quick rebuild. I put the uh, set of the one by two Technic brick with the friction peg in it. I just put this uh, two by two slope, uh, put the guns on it still, uh, except the guns are facing the other way. 
and I just put this octagon on top and then this this pin this this antenna fits right in the middle there so this thing that's the only rebuild I did here on top and it still fits in there so you can still take him out and this guy still this guy this robot uh, fits right in there. So now he's got like an R2-D2 back there. <laughs> so that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, and so that was my rebuild for the antenna. And I think it looks, for me, it actually does look better than the original. <laughs> so uh, not only did I get my Technic piece back, but I also made, I, I like the Octagon. It's one of my favorite pieces. And it's on there and I think it looks fantastic. So that's what I did in the end. Those are, those are the rebuilds. The interior here down the center, completely rebuilt with the landing pads. Uh, the front piece is exactly the same. It's all there. Um, all the pieces that uh, hold this, these side pieces to this thing, all, all identical. This entire top piece, again, except for the interior here where the guy's sitting, is a, exactly identical. Uh, this is all identical except for the antenna, uh, all identical. So the whole set uh, is pretty much exactly the same as the instructions have except I have retractable landing gear and I have the guy sitting up straight uh, because this was a fun build. I really enjoyed this. Now I'm not gonna say I enjoyed it as much as the 497 or the 99928, but I really enjoyed this build. And I also really enjoyed modifying this build the way I wanted to modify it with the, the ideas that I had. Uh, but also when you look at it, it looks pretty much identical from this spot when you're looking at it here, except for the landing pad. And I think the landing pads just add to it because now it looks like it's a sister ship to the 928. Now all three ships, when I get to build the 924, are gonna look comparably the same. And I like that. Now, I was gonna go into this. Uh, we'll talk about it right now. The one thing, and I'm not gonna fault them. I, really not, I, I don't know how many pieces were in this set but I do know that the number of pieces in here is far dwarfed by the number of pieces in here. <laughs> Obviously, it's like twice as big and 15,000 more parts. The one thing that, it doesn't annoy me, I understand why they do it. The one thing that I noticed, well, let's say that's the most polite way I can put it. The one thing I noticed is that the Lego company, the Lego designers build everything with a ton of pieces. Uh, hidden pieces, hidden inside pieces to build structure or to build out or build whatever. This entire back end, this entire back end is pretty much solid uh, except for this and you can look down here uh, like this is where the robot sits or this thing sits. It's kind of neat. But they have they have a 2x2 two two, uh, white uh, slope piece in here with the black stripes on it just like that one on the opposite side that you'll never see. It's built into there though. It, it was to help you know, hold this, this canopy piece. And I get all that. I get that there's a reason for it, but this thing is solid. Like it's so freaking heavy. Now you look at this guy. Now, again, this is only four wide and that's like eight wide. I get that, but you open this up and it's hollow inside, right? There's nothing else. And this is what they built all the sets back then. There was nothing else besides the shell with nothing inside, like no engines, no nothing. And so the idea is, I guess, all the stuff they put in there is engine, <laughs> but it is, as I say, it's so heavy. Like I, the center of balance is, uh, I think right there, right? So you got all this stuff up front and you got these pieces out back and this is where the center of balance is. So this is where all the solid, like this is, this whole back end is solid brick. Uh, they did put this little angle piece to, to, to make it look like this angle piece here. But of course they didn't continue it all the way across because they had to have a place to, to mount the engine. So there's this uh, big gray brick there. Um, they did put these on, which is fantastic because that does give idea about the store that was in this one, um, the storage area. But I don't know, I, 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 I wouldn't know how to rebuild this thing without all the bricks inside here. Like to make it hollow, like the original one. I, I mean, uh, do I want to do that? I'm not gonna go to that extent. The other thing is besides these two uh, one by two um, grill plates, uh, this this entire back half comes off from that. So it's like, it, it um, like that, right? <laughs> like it's not built through. Like usually when I build, I build all the way through. So it uh, it's more rigid, um, but uh, oh yeah. So there's the inside, right? So, you know, in the end, uh, I can see why they did it this way. 
because maybe they, you know, everybody always complained, where, where's the engines in these spaceships? Uh, and this one now has an uh, engine compartment and a control panel for a robot and all that stuff. It's, it's kind of cute. Uh, in the end, I'm griping about nothing because I absolutely adore this set. I, uh, I'm not going to say I like this better than the 928. This is completely nostalgic of me getting my first set when I was a kid. Um, so I'm not complaining at all about this. I, I, you pick it up and it's very heavy. And I understand why. Uh, inside, underneath these wing plates, there's all that uh, all that building to keep these pieces on and everything else. I love it. I thought that was a lot of fun. The logo is fantastic. Me making my own LL918 brick was utterly fantastic. Uh, basically, I just grabbed uh, one by sixes from my collection um, that were good <laughs> and new, uh, and I just printed that off my Cricut and attached it. So I still got the 928s in the box, the bricks, the 928 bricks. Um, so in the end, uh, I, I will say I had a lot of fun doing this and I had a lot of fun thinking about the modifications I wanted to do. Uh, one more quick thing. I absolutely adore these thrusters. I, I, I cannot say enough about how much I adore these thrusters. Again, I've always liked the original thruster pieces here, uh, but these are utterly fantastic. I, I was kind of, when I saw the pictures in the original uh, for the 10497 and going, oh, they use buckets and then it's gonna look stupid. But after I built them, they're gorgeous. They're straight up gorgeous. And, they, and, they, and, they, and they're at a scale to the rest of the ship. Uh, can't complain about that at all. I love, I love the tail that they kept the 918 to be gray, just like the original. Um, you know, everything about this set screams uh, me to me at when I was 11 years old. Boy, I wish I had this when I was 11, because um, this is an utterly fantastic one-man ship, uh, and I, I cannot speak highly enough about it. Uh, even, I even, and some people have already complained about this, this one by or two by six plate because it's above the wings. Uh, I, I love that. I think that's fantastic. There's nothing at all wrong with this ship. Out of the, out of the instructions uh, that you, but I, but I wanted, as I say, I wanted a landing gear and I wanted a guy to sit up straight. So that's why I modified it. Not too much modifications. Um, as I say, the rest of it is identical to the original. And uh, this is the one set that's gonna be in the space layout, the CSL. Because that, I love it, I love it, I love it, but it's way too big. <laughs> it, it will not fit on a landing pad. Uh, this thing is pretty much the same size as the original Galaxy Explorer. It really is. Uh, so it will fit nicely on a, an old style landing pad from the 80s. Uh, so this one is going to be in the layout going forward. And if I get a, like the third 10497 I get is going to be the 924, obviously. Uh, so I have one of each, but if I do get a fourth and there's a high probability that I'm going to get a fourth, I'm going to build another one of these. So I'm going to have a fleet of these 918s. Um, the 928's a gorgeous ship on its own. Um, we'll talk about that for two seconds, but I'm not going to get a review. Um, whoops, let me break it. <laughs> That's fun. Didn't expect that to happen. Live on TV. Um, so that's a bit of a quandary now. I'm gonna have to fix that. I should probably pick it up a little better next time. Let me just, I'm not gonna redo this entire video, so you guys are gonna see me breaking this thing. <laughs> that I did not expect. Um, so, and let's see if I can actually rebuild this thing on the fly. I think that goes there. I hope that goes there. I might have to stop the video and actually try to fix this without uh, you guys watching me because I'm not exactly sure how to fix this right now. Because, um, oh, this is, this is great. Okay, let's do that, that. And um, I'm vamping now and I can't vamp and do this at the same time. So I'm actually going to uh, say goodnight while I fix this. And um, this is a, a, an abrupt and surprising end to my video because I did not expect this to happen. And I'm sorry it did. So I want everybody out there to stay safe, take care, um, be kind to your neighbors if you can. And I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.